former French Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte said, the amateurs discuss tactics, the professionals discuss logistics. That is exactly one of the working mottos that SpaceX has successfully applied in the development of its giant Starship rocket. Indeed, after two Starship tests last year, SpaceX went one step further when deciding to increase Starship's flight cadence in 2024, and Flight 3 is actually the first step in their plans for this year. To prepare for the upcoming test, the work on Starship's logistics has begun by reorganizing the resources at hand, including the redesign of the orbital tank farm, with the biggest upgrade that was revealed recently. Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. In advance, the new subchillers have been added to speed up the propellant loading rate. Following that, the recondenser system is planned to be renewed. On February 22, cameras recorded once again the arrival of the big vaporizers in Starbase. This small update may not be able to concern you much, but it's actually one of the notable signals for the biggest change on Starbase tank farm for Flight 3. So let's drive dive in. Remember it? Yeah. In December last year, two of the massive vertical tank farms at OTF were removed, but one remaining water tank is still here. Removal of water tanks is considered to make room for the installation of new vaporizers. The water in these tanks was used in the heat exchange process to create propellant pressurization gas. After filling the Starship, the cryogenic storage tanks will empty out, causing a pressure imbalance. By topping up those gases, the pressure will be equalized again and prevent the tanks from collapsing. This solution seems to be effective, but it also leads to a new problem. That water might be only valuable in the heat exchange process until it is nearly frozen. At that time, we have to replace it with the new water. But with much less water in the system, it's really hard to have enough for the full job. Additionally, this will take longer than today's increasingly faster propellant loading, thanks to the installation of new subchillers. So, SpaceX came up with a more feasible answer for this hard problem, some new vaporizers. At this point, a question is put, what is the vaporizer? This is a very simple device, but very important as well, acting like a reverse CPU cooler, meaning instead of dissipating the heat from the source, collecting the heat from the outside, and transferring it to the source. In detail, these evaporators will take heat from the surrounding Texas air and then use that to warm up cryogenic liquids, turning them into gas. The gas will be back to the cryogenic storage tanks in addition to the water heat exchange system. To be honest, these new machines have been delivered here gradually since January, showing the urgent preparation for the goal of hardware readiness in February by then. Almost each of them was moved over to the tank farm area shortly after arriving. It's safe to say that the increase in pump capacity serving for the quicker propellant loading usually requires a lot of these vaporizers. Therefore, it can be predicted that deliveries will still continue in the near future to meet Starship's launch date in March. The tank farm redesign this time plays an important role in SpaceX's 2024 plan. We know that the company has set a target for nine Starship launches this year, more than four times the two launches last year. Obviously, with such a large number of launches, the infrastructure in its old state can easily fall into overload. More flights usually need more launch pads, and currently, the second launch tower's construction has been kicked off in Starbase. Once fully completed, that new launch pad is also supported by the new tank farm. Apparently, more launch pads will not make sense, if we don't have enough time to load propellant for two Starship rockets within a short time. Referring to the logistics aspect of the Starship project, the tank farm redesign as well as other infrastructure work is only a very small item. But if we look at the overall picture, another logistical issue worth noting is financing. Starship is a unique vehicle that should be assessed by many economic principles because it is built by a commercial company with a mass production strategy. Everything is off the table with only one rocket, but with hundreds or thousands of rockets being produced along with dozens of thousands of Raptor engines, it's a really big deal. According to estimations, the whole Starship project over the next decades will cost Elon Musk $20.17 trillion if Mars colonization is realized. If you think that amount of money is too much for Musk, no matter how rich he is, remember that he also has a great tool, logistics. A few years ago, Musk said that when all said and done, developing Starship would cost probably $2 billion or $3 billion. 
That's a pretty hefty sum but amortized across 10 million flights, 1,000 rockets flying 1,000 times a year over 10 years. It dwindles to insignificance, adding only about $250 to the cost of each flight. Likewise, construction costs. SpaceX puts the list price of its Falcon 9 rocket at $67 million. If you assume that Starship with five times Falcon's payload costs roughly three times as much to build, this implies that building a single Starship might cost roughly $216 million, about the cost of a Boeing 767 airplane. A thousand Starships would accordingly cost $216 billion. In fact, they might cost a bit less than that. Instead of the expensive aluminum lithium alloy that Falcon is built from, Musk says Starship will be made of steel that costs SpaceX only $3 a kilogram. But even assuming roughly proportional construction costs, $216 billion isn't so bad. Amortized over 10 million launches. Again, the cost shrinks to form a very manageable number, just an extra $21,600 per launch. Amortizing both development and construction costs over 10 million launches and adding them to Starship's operating cost thus raises the total cost of each Starship launch to about $2.22 million. And that's probably the most important takeaway here, amortized over a sufficiently large number of launches. The cost of Starship essentially shrinks to its operating cost, $2 million. Inventing and even building the thing doesn't add much cost at all. Thus, Musk's plan for colonizing Mars actually does look affordable. Yes, you can turn big numbers into small numbers by amortizing them over 10 million launches, even at a low of $2.22 million per launch times 10 million launches. This project will ultimately cost SpaceX the staggering sum of more than $20.22 trillion. However, it turns out that's not too much as Starship was originally designed not only for use on Mars, but also on Earth particularly Elon Musk's plans to use Starship for point-to-point -point travel around the globe at speeds faster than any airplane on Earth has ever dreamed of. This facilitates the ambitious plans of government agencies, the U.S. military, for example. In 2021, the U.S. Air Force expanded a small development program that wants to leverage reusable rockets, like those SpaceX is building, to deliver cargo quickly to anywhere in the world. Called Rocket Cargo, the program will research and help develop capabilities such as landing a rocket on a wide range of non-traditional materials and surfaces, engineering a rocket cargo bay and logistics for rapid loading and unloading and airdropping cargo from the rocket after re-entry in order to service locations where a rocket or aircraft cannot possibly land. Fast forward to 2023, the U.S. military is planning to get to thousands of SpaceX flights per year, and they even intend to purchase this rocket. Obviously, SpaceX was too clever to be determined from the beginning to build a cheap rocket at an unexpected price of under $10 million. This is truly an extremely competitive advantage for SpaceX in a market where commercial rocket startups are growing rapidly. Thanks to that, the company will thoroughly solve the logistics problem during the development of its Starship. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. If you want to explore more aspects of the world's most powerful rockets and the world of rockets in general, here is a selection of deeper dive videos for you. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.